Here's everything I learned from traveling to Jeju in South Korea. I recently came back from my second trip there. It's a really beautiful island, but there are some things I wish I knew. You can watch my 22 things to do in Jeju Island video right here. I tried to go to as many places as possible. I didn't take any tours, but there are plenty online. Let's get started. Where to stay? This is probably the top question. There are four main areas to stay in Jeju. Most tourists will stay in the north in Jeju city or Sogbipo city in the south. Where you stay will depend on how long you're staying and what activities you want to do. If you're staying longer than three nights, you can always switch hotels to experience different areas. Let's start with Jeju city. Jeju city is where the airport is. There are a few cool tourist sites, but other than that, it's a typical city with lots of buildings, shopping, cafes, restaurants, etc. People like to stay in Jeju City because it's only 10 minutes from the airport and it's a bit livelier, though quieter compared to Busan or Seoul. It's also easier to take the bus from Jeju City to main tourist areas. There's more buses available here. This is where I stayed and I just took the buses to different areas. If you're only staying a night or two or have an early flight out, it's probably better to stay in Jeju City. If you're only traveling by bus and for only two nights, it's also better to stay in Jeju City and you'll see why in my bus section of the video. Sogwipo City Sogwipo city is the second largest city in Jeju Island, though more chill. It's closer to greenery and nature sites like cliffs and waterfalls. Hotels in the south are also cheaper than in Jeju city. Stay in Sogwipo city if most of the things you want to do are in the south, so you don't have to keep going back and forth. But if there's only a few things you want to do in the south, you can always just allocate one day in the south and then stay elsewhere. East Coast or Songsan a main reason to stay in the east coast is to be closer to specific sites. People like to hike Sunrise Peak right at sunrise, so it's just more convenient to stay in the east. Also, it's better for people who want to travel early to Udo Island, which is just off the east coast. West Coast People like to stay in the west coast or more northwestern for all the beaches and the cafe culture. A lot of the Airbnbs and home pensions are also located in the west. I'd stay in the northwest if you want to be closer to those specific beaches. Otherwise, there's beaches throughout Jeju Island. In summary, if you want to travel all around Jeju Island or only there for a short time or traveling by bus or have an early flight out, it's probably better to stay in Jeju City. If you want to spend more than one day in the south or most of the things you want to do are in the south, stay in Sokpo City. Stay in the west or east if you want to be closer to those specific sites for most of the time. And if you're staying for longer than three nights, try switching hotels. Also, if you're traveling by bus, try to look for a hotel that's walkable or a quick bus ride away from the main bus terminal just so you can save time. Hotel costs will vary. Hotels in Jeju City are more expensive than Sokpo City, but you can find a decent one around $40. In the south, you will get bigger and cheaper options. Things to do in Jeju Island Make sure to watch my 22 things to do in Jeju Island and write down all the sites that interest you. Here are my personal top 5 sites. General planning tips, try to bunch sites that are walkable from each other so the bus ride or the drive is worth it. One of the things I enjoyed most was walking between sites. You're usually surrounded by nature or interesting remote areas. And there's trails and paths set up throughout the whole island. To find more places to go nearby, type in tourist attractions in Google Maps and look for the camera icon. Look at the reviews and photos and if it interests you, write it down. Try to plan around sunsets around 6 or 7 p.m. The sunsets in Jeju Island are really pretty, especially on the beaches and the coastlines. Transportation. In case you didn't know, there is no subway on Jeju Island. From the airport, you have three options. One, rent a car. You will need an international license or a Korea license. You can also hire a private driver around 150 to 300 USD a day. Two, take a taxi if you're staying in Jeju City. Taxi ride is only 10 minutes away and it's usually around 7 to 8 USD. A taxi ride to the south will be around 30 to 40 dollars and take around 45 minutes. The cheaper option would be to take the airport limousine bus number 600 from the airport. It runs every 15 to 20 minutes. It first stops at popular hotels in Jeju City, then cuts down to Sokpo City in the south. It'll take about an hour to get to the south. When you get on this limousine bus, the driver will ask where you're headed. You can either show them on the map, tell them your hotel, or just generally say Jeju City or Sokpo City, and he'll charge you according to where you're going. You can pay with your T-Money card and stops are announced in English. Getting around by taxi. 
It's easier to hail a taxi or book a taxi on Kakao Tea app in main touristy areas. If you're in a more remote area, getting a taxi is not guaranteed, but there are plenty of buses. Uber Taxi only seems to work in Jeju City, but it might take a while to get one. To load your tea money card, you can go to any convenience store. You just hand in your card and the money and they'll load it for you. Bus guide. A lot of people will discourage you from visiting Jeju Island if you're only traveling by bus. Jeju City actually has tons of buses. They have the express buses, intercity buses, intra-city buses, and limousine buses. For both my visits to Jeju, I only took the bus and was able to get all around Jeju Island. The most I walked from a bus stop was 15 to 20 minutes, but the views are really nice. It is a slower pace if you're only used to subways, but I personally enjoy the bus rides. I downloaded some audiobooks and music, and it was really peaceful and nice. Also, all of the buses in Jeju Island have free and fast Wi-Fi. And minus the airport limousine bus, the cost of buses are around $1 to $2. Okay, here are my bus tips. It might sound like a lot and complicated, but I also want you to set your expectations. So if you're gonna take the bus in Jeju Island, take some notes. I also put everything I'm saying here in a blog post in the link below. You can also just take Jeju City's hop off and hop on bus, but it's limited to specific sites. Number one, bus apps to use. I mostly use Naver Maps and Google Maps, which I'll tell you why next. First, Naver Map shows you all the bus options that are near you. Hop on the bus that's coming soonest and the one with less walking. For Naver Maps, if you put the name in English and you didn't find anything, look up the name in Google Maps and then if you scroll down, there's usually the address in Korean or Hangul and then just copy and paste that into Naver Map. Let's talk about Google Maps. Google Maps is not set up for South Korea. The bus results for Jeju Island can be incorrect. For example, the ETA when the bus will come is usually wrong. The only bus Google Maps generally gets right is the airport limousine bus number 600. Plus, not all the routes will show on Google Maps. The main reason I use Google Maps is because Naver Map and Kakao Map don't mark the buses on the map, so you don't know when to press the red stop button. Unless I'm missing something, let me know. So I look up routes or similar routes in Google Maps and just follow the blue dot so I know when to get off. If you don't want to do this, you can always take a screenshot of all the stops on Naver Map and then put into Google Translate or Papago app to English and then look for your stop or listen for your stop on the screen board on the bus. Worst case scenario, you miss your bus stop and have to walk a little or take another bus. I only use Kakao Map if Naver Map didn't have an ETA time, but the thing is Naver Map and Kakao Map didn't always show the same bus results which is really confusing. Bus schedules and ETA. The biggest complaint you hear about busing in Jeju Island is the wait times. Bus schedules and wait times will depend where you're coming from. At most, I waited for a bus about 20 minutes or just walked to a different bus route. But if you're taking a bus from the main bus terminal in Jeju City, buses might come every 30 minutes or even once an hour. And Naver Map won't show you the ETAs for the main bus terminals. You can find the schedules for the main bus terminal in person at the terminal or online, but the schedules online are in Korean. So you have to take a screenshot of the schedule online and then run it through Papagao or Google Translate and then look for your stop and when it's gonna get there. It's the only way. Buses at the main bus terminals generally leave right on the dot. If you're coming from or going to the west, east, or other areas, there's plenty of buses. They're all going towards the same direction. For inner city buses, most bus stops will have the electric signage. It shows all the upcoming buses plus how many more minutes until it arrives. Once it's two minutes away, it announces in Korean that the bus is coming. That's when you should stand up. And when the bus comes, make sure to wave them down just in case. Remember to tap on and off. Let's talk ETAs. Sometimes when you look up bus directions on Naver Map or Kakao Map, you won't find an ETA or that minute countdown when the bus is coming. Here are two reasons why. One, it's because you're taking a bus from the main terminal in Jeju City. Again, the maps won't show the ETA. You'll have to look online or in person at the terminal. For other buses, there's no ETA because the bus hasn't left their starting point yet. So the ETA clock hasn't started. Sometimes you have to keep refreshing until an ETA shows up. From my experience, the ETA will show up once it's 15 minutes away. Some last general bus stop tips. Some buses do get packed around 5 or 6 p.m. so you might have to stand up for a bit. The last bus ends around 11 p.m. though there's not really a nightlife in Jeju Island. Maybe in Jeju City but there's plenty of taxis. If you're on the bus and you're looking out the window and you see something pretty, 
pull out Google Maps and take a screenshot of the place so you can save it for the future. The first time I went to Jeju Island, I tried fitting in as many places as I could and kind of rushed a bit so I can make all the bus schedules. Second time around, I took it slower. I took my time at all the sites and beaches and didn't rush it. I wandered around, I walked a lot, and I enjoyed it more the second time. You can always come back to Jeju and if you're not able to, I still recommend taking your time to enjoy all the views. Honestly, traveling around Jeju does take some effort. You can always just book a tour to make it easier for you. But honestly, I love the challenge and the wandering around. I would totally go back to Jeju Island for a third time and do more of the hiking trails. There's so many. Again, you can find everything I just said in this video in a blog post linked below. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll try my best. Enjoy your trip to Jeju. Bye.